Hello and welcome to a brand new season on the Ladies European Tour and a return to what's become the traditional opening event, the magical Kenya Ladies Open. Held in the wildlife-rich Kalifi County on a ridge above the Pacific Ocean, the Par 73 Baobab course is like no other. Herds of zebras and giraffes have made their home on the fairways. It truly is an 18 to tick off your bucket list. Unsurprisingly then, it's a firm favorite with the players. Diksha Dago won in the Czech Republic last year and came close to winning the Order of Merit, as did Lexi Firsteling, one of just two players last year to win twice. Anna Palaev Trevino also came close to topping the rankings with three second places. But a new year brings new talents, with Tour School winner Natalia Guseva, the pick of 20 rookies in the field. Defending champion Aditi Ashok couldn't make it, there would be a new name on the trophy. As ever, it wasn't just the players striping it out on the fairways, but on the greens, it was best left to the pros. Sophie Kipsgaard showing the four-legged spectators how it's done. The Dame, a three-time winner on the Access Series last year, opening with a round of three under to leave her in a tie for fourth. That left her on the same score as Alessandra Finale, the Italian part of a winning team at the Aramco Team Series last year and in the mix individually this time around, this at the last setting up a round of 70. Olivia Mahaffey put herself in contention in her comeback year last season without quite sealing the deal. The Ulster woman once again in with a chance, this well judged to save par as she ended the day just one off the lead. That lead was held by three players, one of those rookie Lauren Walsh. The Irish woman arrives on tour after impressing in college golf and she put together a rare thing at the Baobab course, a bogey free round. Four birdies also helped in a 69. Shot of the day, Cara Gourlay, her tee shot at the par 4 13th, found the fairway bunker. But Gourlay produced a bit of magic. Why is South African so good out of bunkers? Practice makes perfect. Rookie Gourlay, four under. They were joined at the top by an old hand, Ellie Givens. The Englishwoman now in her 12th season had six birdies in her first eight holes and ended the day at the top of the tree. Diksha Dagger also off to a solid start, two under. Gore, though, one of those to catch, and the South African is no stranger to playing well in Kenya. Yes, I played here in Nairobi in 2014 with uh, Team South Africa, and we won the team event there, and I think I came second individually, so uh, Kenya's been good to me so far. Not easy to stick your neck out and call a winner here this week, well, at least for some. But Diksha Dagger's hopes seem to be receding. A birdie here from the Indian getting her father's approval on the bag. But a rare moment to cheer in a round of four over. Dagger out of the running. But Lexi Firstling very much in it. The two-time winner went on a charge. This at the 11th. Landed, massive move by the German, gets herself to two under par. Shannon Tan is the brightest golfing prospect to emerge from Singapore. Her smooth swing easing her through qualifying school in a tie for eighth. Tan, who only turned pro in the last month, bogey free on day two in a round of three under. Chiara Tambellini may be a rookie on tour, but she already got used to winning in 2023, clinching victory twice on the Axis Tour. She seems comfortable making the step up. A round of two under put her just two back. Alessandra Finale kept up her challenge. She got it to six under for the tournament after this great tee shot at the fourth, her 13th hole of the day. But some late bogeys saw her settle for a level par 73 to keep the Italian at three under. Natalia Guseva made a move, a winner on the Epson Tour last season. The Moscow-born rookie began to land the putts. This, a beauty at the 16th in a 70, four under overall and into second place. But keeping her nose out in front was Cara Gourle, one under for the day in challenging windy conditions, good enough to ensure a one-shot lead. After struggling last year, a recent change of coach seems to be making a difference. A truly international looking leaderboard, every position filled by a different nationality. One of those Swiss rookie Tambellini, 
who was enjoying playing in the limelight. I just try to tell myself that all I can do is just play as good as I can anyways. If there's cameras or not, then if the others are playing amazing or not. Um, so, yeah. Saturday, traditionally moving day. Well, at least for some. Plenty to chew over for those two and for Cara Gourle. Suffering with illness, the South African opened with a double bogey and dropped another at the seventh. This at the ninth looked as if it may spark a comeback, but the back nine continued to be a struggle as she dropped out of contention. Anna Palai Trevino kept her faint hopes alive. The Spaniard with two eagles and a birdie in five holes around the turn. Yet some costly bogeys at 15 and 16 pegged her back. She returned to the clubhouse two under. That was one behind and Chisa Utama, the tired good friend of last year's number one, Trishat Chinglab, joining the rest of the rookies in shining in Kenya. This a real bonus birdie at 17 in a round of 71, three under overall. Chiara Tambellini also at that score. Level par from the Swiss Miss, who produced one of the shots of the day at the par 3 17th. Now that's the way to make a birdie. Another rookie found birdies harder to come by, Natalia Guseva. A tap in birdie here at the par 5 11th, but two bogeys would follow for a round of one over, three under overall. Samantha Bruce is yet another rookie impressing this week. The Seattle University graduate had five birdies and three bogeys, showing some lovely recovery skills. From the trees, dancing one around the pin. That left her four under, but some five shots behind the two leaders. Tan one of those after a brilliant round of six under. Smooth as silk by Tan. It's a great rhythm. Playing partner Finale also producing a personal highlight reel. Nading parts and pretty good with a wedge in her hand as well. <laughs> Nevertheless, the Italian remained one shot behind coming to the last. Yet the girl from Rome was imperious with a putter. Never in doubt as she ended with a bogey-free round of six under and nine under overall. It couldn't be set up better for the final round then. And with the likes of Lexi Firstling struggling on Saturday, some new names at the top. It would be a final day match play. It would be cool to win, of course. It would be my first win as a professional. But on the other side, I'll get, I have a chance and I will try and then we'll see what's going to happen. <laughs> Stay with us to see if Tan can make history and become the first ever winner from Singapore, or if Finale could make a breakthrough. See you after the break. Hello and welcome back to Kenya in the final round of the magical Kenya Ladies Open at the past 73 Bayabab course, where it looked as if it would be between two. Rookie Shannon Tan on the brink of making history for Singapore. To do so, she would have to outscore Alessandra Finale. The pair locked at the top with just 18 holes to play. A reminder of how things stand, the leading pair with a five shot lead over yet another rookie, Samantha Bruce, Yet on a course which can bite and unfamiliar last day nerves, nothing could be ruled out. Who would get their hands on this trophy? The weather was slightly overcast with a brisk wind far from straightforward conditions. But Shannon Tan found four early birdies. But also a couple of bogeys as well. One of them here at the sixth, taking her 11 under. But Finale unable to capitalise, ensuring Tan pulled too clear. At the ninth, she had that to reduce it to one shot, not to be. So at the turn, Tan's lead remained at two, Samantha Bruce dropping back, with Anchisa Utama putting some pressure on the top two, up to Finale to try and land some putts if she was to catch Tan. I'm Richard Kaufman, alongside me is Sophie Walker. Sophie, is this still just a duel? 
I believe it is. We had that at the start of the day and Finale needs to make something happen. She's going in first into 10. So you can almost have a match play feel to this. Back left flag. I'm lucky with it being downwind. Just didn't check on the second bounce. It's breezy, not as, as windy as it was maybe on Friday. No, certainly not. It's overcast as well. Tan will be thankful that she has a naturally high ball flight here. It's the only way to stop this one. Play for the release, have it come down softly. A little bit like that. Fabulous from Shannon Tan. How composed has she looked? One of the many rookies that have been up there this week. As has the 33-year-old from Thailand, and Chisa Utama, four under today. Caught the tree on the left-hand side of 11. But a magnificent recovery. It certainly was a golf shot there. If it's not going to be a duel, she's the one likely maybe to join the party. Opting for putter for Finale. Back into the wind, into the slope. Yeah, these greens are rolling fairly slowly, seeing a, a fair few putts come up shy. This 10th hole though, par's a good score, 11 coming up, that's a great birdie opportunity, but Tan has given herself a look here. I'm rolling at just over 8 on the stint metre. It's a good strike. Well, a month ago, she, she was only just turning pro. A couple of months ago, she was thinking it was all about her sophomore year at Texas Tech. Chiara Tambolini had a similar whirlwind of four weeks last year in 2023. She graduated from Ole Miss University, then went on to win two LET Access Series events. Been very solid from this distance, although she did miss a couple on the front nine. A little longer than this, though, to be fair. There you go. The lead remains two. Now these have to drop if Atama really wants to get in the picture. That's two clutch puts in a row on 10 and 11, same type of length. Five under, three 11 holes in this final round now, just three back at eight under. One of those making a first ladies European tour start, like the leader Shannon Tan, although Tan did tee it up in a, an Aramco team series event last year as one of the amateurs. A winner of the last Aramco team series event in Riyadh, Alessandra Finale, now has herself with eyes on the individual prize here, just an iron into 11. She's not birded it this week. One eagle, two pars. It's fine to sand again, like yesterday. Tan. Scores have got better by three shots every day after opening with a 73. And she has been making the most of this par five. It's under 500 yards, it's downwind. An iron into the heart of the green. It's textbook. Yeah, she calls her style of golf boring golf. Fairways, greens, it's... Uh, Doing nicely for her so far this week. Katama just through the back of 12. Just hit the down slope. So leaving herself a lengthy 40 foot mm -hmm. pot. Even more mm -hmm. so in fact. And another one left to hole out. Not too awkward this. It should all funnel down from left to right as the green slopes. It stayed straight on her. Unlucky. Yeah, remember Tan's on the green in this par five in two. Finale leaving that for birdie. Already two behind the player she shared the lead with overnight. This is really to stay in it, to have a chance. Another good hold put there. That's three in a row. 
Yeah, part of the uh, Tong Chai Jai Academy in Lopburi, just outside of Bangkok in Thailand. Up the slope for Tan at 11. Birded this hole every day so far. Okay, it's not an eagle, but it's a birdie, so it's over to you, Alessandra. I'm in for my birdie four. Yeah, we have had players win first time out on the LET before. That, I mean, this is what it's all about here at the Bayabab course. Zebra's running riot. They're enjoying it's distracting, themselves. Distracting, I think, for some of the players. Don't want to be distracted over this one. Plays half a shot under its par. It's a must make birdie in circumstances and for the scorecard. It's got to, hasn't it? Well, it looked as if it was going to have that last revolution and drop. She's waiting the 10 seconds. Don't think it's going to fall. You think yesterday, 26 putts. She holds some real momentum boosting putts, and that one just seems like totally the other way for the Italian. Well, who knows how big a difference that will make. Tan with the simplest of birdie putts. And the lead now three for the teenager from Singapore. Yeah, five birdies already today from Shannon Tan. It's been the same story for Utama. She's got an opportunity to add one more here at 13. But that is never going to get there she needs to really keep making them on a day like this particularly as it doesn't look like tan is going backwards smooth eight iron here for tan 162 yards keep left of the flag there's a bunker short right and a down slope that will spring the ball off it she's just doing what she's supposed to do didn't need to go at that flag Left herself that 25 foot pot up the hill. It's not an easy start to the year. I mean, it's a spectacular one. You get to see all the wonderful wildlife here that's part of the sanctuary. But in terms of golf, it, you've got to hit the ground running. It's so claustrophobic on this golf course. You can't feel the wind on 12, you're in the trees. Finale has to go attacking this pin. Same club, needs to take it to the right hand side. That's wonderful. Carried the slope. Got it in there close. Yeah, lost in a playoff as an amateur at the Italian Open a couple of years ago. Left herself some work to do here, four feet for part. Oh, we're waxing lyrical about how well she's hold those puts on the back nine, a three put from nowhere for the Thai player. Yeah, that'll be uh, an untimely first bogey of the day. Take a five back from the leader who has another birdie opportunity here at the par 312. It's a good looking one as well. It's just going to peel off that bunker from right to left. Stress free again though. Will be at finale. May be able to bite back here. Well, unfortunately you feel like it really is now between the top two. Still playing for that place in Saudi next week though. Finale. Oh, she hit a good pot. She thought she'd made that one. She's slapping the thigh of the missed opportunity on 10, 11, now 12. Only three parts for the Italian where you'd be wanting to think that you'd be at least one under. She's had some opportunities to put some pressure on Tan on this back nine. Yeah, not over yet, but work to do for Finale. But it's the first player from Singapore to play on the LAT in her first start on tour. And at the moment, 19-year-old Shannon Tan in command of the magical Kenya Ladies Open.
Welcome back to the final round of the opening event of the Ladies European Tour season. The magical Kenya Ladies Open, where Shannon Tan holds a three-shot lead coming down the back nine. Natalia Gusova, she is not in next week, the Saudi Ladies International, so playing for a top two spot. Player's not already exempt. She sticks one in there close on 15. Yeah, it's up at 13. Finale finding the fairway bunker. It's 125 yards. It's easy to flip this one left from the upslope. That she did, but left's the play here. Anything right just gets gobbled up and you've got no green to work with. Yeah, Finale finding the bunker. Tan a little fortunate. She just missed it. She did, 124 yards, ball below her feet, lie scrappy, it's on a bare patch. Another flag, like 12, that she's got to play away from, keep this one left, avoid the false front. She's just doing it again, isn't she? Whatever a caddy Robin is telling her to do, she's just hand me the club and she hits it directly there. It takes a lot of discipline to play away from pins. Yeah, you mentioned those two places up for grabs for the Saudi Ladies International. One would assume Tan has one of them. Nice bad. And Gusova certainly in the hunt for the other. She's now one behind Utama and Tambellini. Great win at Q School. Also qualified at LPGA Tour Q Series. A duff from Finale. Well, this could become a, a pivotal hole I think she'll be putting for par before Tan putts for birdie. She's trying to draw this one into that pin. A green that falls from back to front. Superb. See many players struggle out of the sand this week. Otama, not so much. That on the bag this week for Anchisa. Now, Finale must make. Huge. I mentioned she needed a long putt to go in to grab some momentum. OK, it's just for par, but it keeps her in it. Well, yeah, it looked like she was going to go four, maybe five behind. Great save in the end from Finale. Knows the line. Keep it high on the left-hand side. And that's maybe the difference of when you're in the lead and when you're chasing. Well, surprisingly, no change. I thought we might have a, a two-shot swing in Tan's advantage. It's as you were. Par for Tan, par for Finale. The lead remains three as they head to 14. The 14th hole, it's a, a dog leg from left to right. If you miss the fairway, then it costs you a shot. You need to land the ball between 220 and 260 yards to miss those bunkers, and it's straight back into the wind. Well, again, she's just avoided the sand. Did win a professional event last year, the Singapore Ladies Masters, which was part of the China LPGA. This is her first start on the L.E.T. Finale just skirted over those bunkers down the right-hand side. It leaves herself a 9-9 into this front pin. Good two-club wind up there, though. Yeah. Just got to keep the pressure on, got to hope for a mistake. And then instead of holding a long putt for par, she makes one of those for birdie. Oh, first look at Anna Palaith Trevino. One birdie, one bogey, one eagle so far in this final round. And that's the way it remains. I suppose given her recent coaching swing changes, a successful week? Yeah, especially after the start of the week. Since then, she's built well, got some reps in, trust the process. Seems like she's had this type of length of putt most of the back nine. Speed's been very good. This one from left to right. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a case of uh, come and catch me if you can. It's not an easy hole to really push down on the accelerator, or I should say easy course to be pushing down on the accelerator. Hold from off the green yesterday finale for birdie on 14. That was with a chip. This one from right to left. Yeah, both players yesterday shot 67 in the penultimate group to really take them away from the rest of the field. None of the chasing pack have really been able to get close to Tama apart. Yeah, it's one of the back nine. I mean, everything happened in the first sort of six, seven holes. Since then, it's been nothing really happening. We've had no birdies from either player apart from that two putt from Tan at 11. Well, it's like Tan's gone three up in match play and then she's just consolidating her position, keeping Finale at arm's length. And she'll be happy for that to remain the way all the way down to the 18th. Easier said than done. Now, Polite Trevino. Three runner up finishes last year, finished fifth on the rankings. Enjoying yourself. Hello again. I think she spotted a friend. A massive tee shot by Finale down 15, over 300 yards. Longest iron in the bag. It's in between, really, for a. Is it hybrid? Is it four iron? Get all of that front right bunker. Sand again on a par five. Fourth edition of this event. The uh, season opener for the third season in a row. The first of 31 events across five continents on the Ladies European Tour. Laid up to around a hundred yard playing yardage, back into the wind, trying to force this wedge low through that wind. And that is just hold on. Good job it's not gone in the bunker. She doesn't like that shot, was practicing it on the driving range. It's something she isn't that comfortable with. Moscow born. Lives in uh, Miami where she went to university. Struggling for par here, Guccifer. It was uh, a woefully short first putt. She's missed that one and that could be costly for the Q school winner. Back to five under. A good 35 yards this, back into the wind. The flag's cut on a top plateau. Yeah. Not what she was hoping for there, Finale. Tama under pressure at the tough par 4, 16th. Well, she missed a short one on 13. She's done the same there on 16. She's leaving the door open for the spots to next week. Never mind winning the trophy. Will you be teeing it up next week? Yeah, it means it's a great opportunity for Tambellini to be alongside her on the leaderboard now at six under. Well, it's a stress-free par. She's done well to avoid the bunkers on this back nine, even, as you say, with that third shot in there off the T2. Got to make your own luck, though. Here is Tambellini. Playing with Otama, so she, know oh, so she knows what's happened. She's done exactly the same. Three-put bogey. Both of them make five on 16. Opportunity spurned. If they shoot the same score, it would come down to the lowest third round. Finally, for Alessandra, she's got herself within two shots with three holes to play. 
and that 16th hole is no give me par. A first birdie of the back nine. The gap closed to just two shots now. And she's seen two putts go in, hasn't she? On 14 and 15. And a tap there for Tan. Well, she says she's more focused than nervous, but if those nerves are to get to her, you would think it would be right now with 16 to come. And that's a closing par for Anna Palais Trevino. A solid start to the season. Closing 71. She's at four under par. And that matched as well by uh, Alice Hewson with Manon DeRoy also finishing on the four under mark. At the top, it's now Tan to ahead. Three to play in Kenya. Welcome back to the closing stages of the Magical Kenya Ladies Open where teenage Singaporean Shannon Tan has seen her lead cut to two shots by finale and they're now at the tough 16th. Found the fairway from the tee. This has been the club of choice for finale this week. Hit the hybrid so well. Playing about 200 yards back into the wind, uphill won't be the first. Less than a third of players have hit this green this week. This has got to be one of the hardest holes on the Ladies European Tour all season. And it's in your first event of the season. Play driver to the dog leg. Really did take this one on. You see how close she is to those bunkers, but she still has to hit a hybrid in. You expect it to be left of the flag. It is. Yep, it's on from Tan. All she needed to do right now, not put herself under any more pressure, having seen that lead reduced to two. This up at 18 with Guseva. Somehow still has an outside chance of getting that second spot for next week's event. I'm short again. I'm sure she's saying that to herself. These greens hasn't got to grips with them. Finale taking the, the putter out here. Yeah, maybe it was the duff chip on 13 that has made her take this putter. Maybe she's pin high. Another fairway cut just grabbed it. Yeah, another one coming up shy. Just made a little bit of inroads and now putting some pressure on herself. And that will help Shannon Tan a little. Went for the flag on 17, turned it over, the wind hit it. And what did I say about dust just a moment ago? Seen one there. Low point, you can see by the drain, might be wet and fluffy down there. Just cosy it down there, I suppose. That's the idea. Oh yeah, we're all about the pace. Just keep it high and left here. Maybe highlighting the speed of these greens. She's clicking her fingers, asking for it to stop, and it's still a foot and a half short. Well, Arthur Munoz won on her Ladies European Tour debut. Alice Hewson did it most recently. A player that won on debut for the LET Access Series. Turn pro, then won in Gothenburg. Chiara Tambolini making her debut on the Ladies European Tour. and. We keep talking about the spot for next week in Saudi. She's one of the three that can take it. For the par, for finale. Oh, one step forward, two steps back. Yep, you've just made your first birdie of the back nine. And now you've made your first bogey. Oh, so... Such a frustrating game. And another one goes for Atama. That's three bogeys in five holes for her. And, and it shows what can happen down this stretch as well, which adds to how impressive Tan has been, really. 
Certainly does. She has played that boring goal. She spoke about fairways, greens, two pots. And the significance if this one drops of a three-shot lead with two to play. It means so much more than just that one shot. Finale knows it, so does Tan. She missed one of this length on the last screen. Hopefully this one will fall for Tambellini. What are we seeing? Two three puts in a row. Both of these two in this three ball. Bogey in 16 and 17. Well, it's a, a let off really for Utama. And maybe it does really do give Guseva some hope up at 18. Her oh mind must be scrambled right now, Tambellini, because those missed putts have come from nowhere. Oh, learning to be the professional the hard way, you'd think they got to finish off a tournament. Yeah, there's uh, rankings, points. Just for your confidence as well, more than anything. Guseva then, to try and avoid another drop shot. There that is very good. So at minus four, she does have a chance getting one of those two places for next week. Par three, 17th next for the final group. Went long and left here yesterday. Won't make that same mistake. T's been pushed forward. It's the one thing her caddy Robin really highlighted. He said, I can't believe we did that on 17. It was the wrong club. He wasn't going to do it again today. Got to be flag hunting time for finale, surely. Yeah, it's last chance saloon, isn't it? Same club, 126 yards. Use that win from right to left. So close. She was brave going after that. It's a tough leave, but she's looking at making twos. Well, this is something you don't see every day. A wildlife sanctuary here. There's uh, three giraffes here. Char, Valentine and Kapoi who were rescued. And Well, that's one way to take your mind off the latest bogey she, she's been having. Got some crowd trouble. <laughs> we don't mind, though. No, beautiful animals. Okay, back to the 17th. And work to do here for Finale just to keep it as tight as three. Got to hold it. Oh, close. Very hard to change mentality from wanting to be steady and then going, right, get my foot down and, and let's go. We've been talking about the person who makes as little mistakes. Now Finale has to switch gears quickly with only two holes to play. And, you know, Tan, you know, three birdies in those opening five holes. I mean, it laid the foundation for where she is now. Well, she's at 81% of greens in regulation for the first three rounds, and she hasn't missed a green on the back nine. So, like you say, the foundations were made, and now she is just playing regulation golf. A long putting's been good. She hasn't left herself much for the tap-in par. Nice to see the crowds gathering. That is the state of affairs. The wind's just been knocked out of Alex's sails. She knows that she won't be winning the trophy now. Maybe that was the lack of concentration there. Pushed it. Bogey, bogey on 16 and 17. Yeah, she looks visibly upset there. Okay, they had to wait for the giraffes to clear. The tama. Oh, that's hanging right. There's water all the way down the right side of 18. Oh, this is a horror finish. We mentioned she bogeyed 16 and 17. She's in the drink on 18. Yeah, her chances of teeing it up next week are now severely reduced. Now, given what we've seen at 17, this is not a formality. But it is when you're Shannon Tan. 
a four shot lead to take up the final hole. Well, took a drop, is here playing four. Needs that pop. Oh, what a lovely feeling this must be. And I like this play. Taking a fairway wood means that she's taking the trees left out of play. She can hit it as hard as she likes down that left side, knowing that it's not going to get past 240. It's a longer second, but you're in the middle of the fairway. Well, that was, I suppose, the only thing that could rob her, really, finding the water maybe once or twice, but she's down the middle of the fairway. Back to the scramble for Saudi. Through the back in two. And we're making a big thing of it because it, it is a five million dollar event next week. It's the talk of the driving range. Who's in for next week? There's two spots available and the golfing gods have given Chiara another three four foot putt in a row. That is going to test your mental ability. Well they got a good view of the action. Always get a good view from there, I suppose. Now, come on, Anchisa. It's been a great week. But it's been a very difficult end to the day. Right edge pot. Four shots dropped over the last three holes. What a sad end to the uh, to what was uh, looking like a terrific first week on tour for Utama, and it may well have cost her a place in Saudi Arabia next week. Very cruel, but there's always somebody. Somebody can make the most of an opportunity. Tambolini does that. And that should be a share of third place on her ladies' European Tour debut. Even though there were some wobbles at the end, 72 from Tambellini, and she will be off to Saudi next week. But doesn't that leaderboard make pretty reading for Tam? What a moment for her and for Singapore. Marta Mamet won on the men's European Tour 18 years ago. That was at home soil. Went from right to left. Heart of the green is all that's required. Of course she does that. <laughs> As if you should doubt it. We've seen it all week long from her. So disciplined. Now, Fenari, I suppose she's got to hold it and hope for the best. Seven yards from the left, looks to be a good swing. It's been so composed though, hasn't it, from Tan? I mean, hard to believe that you know, a couple of months ago she was a sophomore at Texas Tech. She had a couple of events in Australia, which I suppose has, has warmed her up nicely, well, it seems to have done, at least for this week. She mentioned about playing in front of the crowds at the Vic Open last week, how she quite enjoyed it. And travelling from Melbourne to Kenya, the jet lag must have been chaos for her. But she's rode that whirlwind, that wave of good golf. Hasn't looked out of place at all. The step up seems simple for her. She's just let her game do the talking. And in fairness, Finale has looked very composed as well. She's hit the ball great off the tee. It's the first time I've really seen her as a professional in this position. This is only a 20th event on the Ladies European Tour as a professional. And that kind of sums up the day. Close with the putter, but not quite. But it is going to be second place for the Italian. But it's all about Shannon Tan. Well, she 
we can afford a few from here but knowing Shannon Tan this is going in to seal the victory <laughs> history maker trailblazer ladies European tour winner Shannon Tan in Singapore have arrived on the ladies European tour Boring Golf wins in Kenya fantastic for Shannon it's been a pleasure to watch it's looked easy and it's a four shot win in the end with a final round 70 excellent last day saw Firstling jump into the top 10 along with last year's number one on the access tour Sophie Kigsbarn Laura Funchstuck with the low score on Sunday a 67 and Leanne Pace with a bogey free 68 but the trophy in the hands of the teenage sensation from Singapore Shannon Tan I guess it's a good thing because it's like, then again, uh, juniors back home know it's possible and they know like, every, like anything is possible and I guess it kind of maybe push them a little bit or like inspire them, if that's the right word. Yeah, inspire, yeah. The win takes her to the top of the rookie rankings and given what we've seen from the newbies in Kenya, this should be a race to watch. An American won two at the top of the Rolex rankings with Lilia Vu ahead of Nelly Corder. Two Europeans in the top 10, Celine Boutier and Charlie Hull. But what a start to the new season. The first of 31 events on the Ladies European Tour and history made in Kenya by Shannon Tan. And the newest LET champion will be joining some of the game's biggest stars next week in Saudi Arabia. As ever, you can keep in touch at ladieseuropeantour.com. Until next time, goodbye.